Final thoughts time for Steamrollers, which Jen and I have enjoyed quite a bit. I mean, it's interesting. Actually, I guess a couple months ago, I did my top 10 dice games of all time. And I'm not saying this would have made my top 10, but it would have definitely warranted serious consideration. I mean, this is a blast. And it's really clever how it takes a big, expansive, steam, age of steam, railways of the world type experience and shrinks it all down into a very tiny footprint, a very fast gameplay, all driven by very uh, enticing dive drafting because every die, if you don't get the die you want, there's always something you can do with them. Get a power for later, um, you know, upgrade your engine, uh, start building other lines. It all works very, very well. Uh, you know, every decision you make over the course of this game is interesting. You get those really great, um, you know, fist pumping moments when you get the exact die you were hoping for. Um, if you're worried you're not going to get the dice you're hoping for, start grabbing those powers that will let you control the dice. And um, just go, go, go. Uh, one, the only thing I didn't mention, I think, in the run through is how the game ends. If I recall correctly, I believe it's once three cities have been emptied. So, um, you know, while you know, it, it might be a bit slow to start because you're really only putting out one uh, rail per turn and slowly building up those networks, once multiple players have networks in place connecting a bunch of cities and they've gotten their engines upgraded, the game just speeds up tremendously and the end will just swoop in on you as everybody's trying to get those last few cubes delivered to um, score those last few points. And then, you know, and also if you play with the contracts, complete them and, uh, you know, get your bonuses for the length of your rails and how much you're, I mean, there's a lot um, for such a simple, light, fast playing game. There's a lot to focus on. And, you know, it's interesting. One of the core elements of these sorts of games, you know, the big brothers of Steamrollers, is the fact that everybody is building out on a central board. And there can be a lot of, of cutthroatedness as players try to cut each other off because, hey, once I've claimed this parcel of land, oh, I'm sorry, you can't build a rail there. Um, and in this game, taking all that and giving each player their own individual map that they're building on, one, on some level, feels a little bit more natural and real. Really, you've, you've gobbled up 100 square miles of land. There's no way I can put a rail somewhere else there. I don't know, maybe that is the case with real rail network development. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, the, the fact that I'm focused on mine, but I do still pay attention to what other people want, not because I'm trying to cut them off on the map, but because we are drafting for dice. And when the dice come out, and I could see, well, yeah, I could really use that three and continue building what I am. But, oh my gosh, if you get that one, you'll get that delivery. And I could make use of that one as well. There is going to be that level of interaction if you want. Although, I think that's really going to be at the lower player counts, that you're really paying attention to the draft and trying to make the best decision you can there. At the higher player counts, I mean, this goes all the way up to five players. I think it's going to be more about, right, what can I get? What can I make the most use of right now? Um, and what... Uh, what uh, delivery routes can I build that hopefully nobody else has so that I can be off by myself? In a two-player game, certainly the map is big enough that I could be focusing on one half and you could be focusing on the other. And I guess that's a little bit off-putting. I guess I'm kind of surprised that there wasn't a version of this that, I don't know, uh, basically cuts out all the outer rim. You know, just so that in a two-player game specifically, the whole map gets cut down a little bit. I mean, it does kind of with the uh, with the walls. But even still, Jen and I have found, I mean, like, let me find one that we've played before. Um, you know, when we had a really restrictive one, you know, a thing that just cut right down the center of the world, it was still a case, Jen and I found it, okay, well, I'll be building and I'll do all these deliveries on this side, you'll do all these deliveries on this side, and then near the end of the game, somebody will cross over and there'll be a little bit of cross-pollinization. It would have been nice for there to be something to be done at, you know, the two-player count to tighten the board up a little bit, but that's a minor complaint, I have to admit, because even in spite of that, Jen and I, We've just found it to be really, really enjoyable. Dice drafting is one of my favorite gameplay mechanisms of all time. And Railways of the World is one of my favorite games of all time. So combining those two things together and making a fun little fast half hour uh, game, Steamrollers is a delight. We've really had a good time with it. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Now, like I said, it's on Kickstarter right now. You can go check out, learn more about it. But otherwise, I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. I'll